Good day, my name's Hugh Reed, and I'm the CEO and founder of Reed Law Group, or PassYourBar.com. Now, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm licensed in numerous jurisdictions by taking the multi-state bar exam, literally every time it's given. I've been taking it for about 30 years. For the last five years or so, I've been taking, taking it every six months. And I do that for my multi-jurisdictional law practice. Uh, I represent U.S. servicemen and women around the country, and as a retired Army colonel, uh, who was in charge of pilot training for the Army in my last duty assignment, I'm fond of checklists and memory devices because these help you get through anxiety-prone moments like an emergency procedure in an aircraft or sitting through a bar examination. So I use a lot of mnemonics and checklists, and today I'd like to give you my 10 steps or 10 things that should increase your multi-state score approximately 10 points. Now, you're going, to be, you're going to be faced with a multi-state bar exam in all jurisdictions other than Washington State and Louisiana, and the examination is the same. The exam has changed recently so that only 190 points out of 200 count towards your total score, but most examiners around the country use the multi-state score as an early indicator as to whether or not you'll pass your bar examination. So I want to make sure that you understand how to get ready for this, and 10 things to think about. And there are a lot of well-meaning people out there, as you, as you may know, uh, who try to help you uh, on this multi-state, but they haven't taken it in years, or some have never taken it at all. Uh, for example, uh, the, uh, uh, the bar review lecturers for, most bar review lecturers for the largest and traditional bar review, and more and more students are finding out that they're wasting their time. In fact, you can go to lawschool.com and find out who some of these bad lecturers are, including the president and CEO of the largest traditional bar review, who's never taken a multi-state bar exam. So he's wasting your time, and let me give you some things that you can use, because the exam has changed recently, and I want to make sure that you're aware of these changes and that you use your time uh, most efficiently. Now, the best way to study for the multi-state bar exam is to follow the outline published by the National Conference of Bar Examiners. And our outlines follow that outline line by line. And then we have a battery of questions that will test you on each of those line items. Because it's not good enough to sit down and say, I'm going to study evidence. That's too huge of a task, and you're not going to be successful. What in evidence are you going to study? What's important in evidence? And what can you do right now to get you better in those areas that have, um, that, that's been diagnosed through diagnostic testing that uh, you need help on? So let me give you some 10 steps right now. It sounds like a, a um, uh, Alcoholic Anonymous <laughs> class, the 12 steps, but uh, really 10 steps, things you need to think about. Now the first one, uh, seems uh, rather silly, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. Read carefully. Read carefully. That's your first rule. How do you read a multi-state bar exam question? You read it from the bottom up. That is, you read the call of the question of the interrogatory first. And then and only then do you read the fact pattern paying special attention to statutes, to strange sounding facts, or to anything in quotation marks. Because only by reading the call of the question first are you going to be able to identify what's important and what's not. So you can get rid of all the other verbiage and all that information that's not important. Number two, focus on the call of the question. I've already stated that to some degree, but the call of the question is everything. Everything else makes your head hurt. So when you read a multi-state question or you read a, an essay exam question, the call of the question is what you, where you should start because everything else is not important. Number three, work by process of elimination. Never ever look for the right answer. For those of you who want to go down and look for the right answer, you'll never be successful on this bar exam. Why? Because you're there to pick the best of four bad alternatives, or the worst of four alternatives. So, the type of questions we're going to see on this exam are best of four bad alternatives, worst of four bad alternatives, dichotomy questions, questions, two questions holding one way, two questions holding another. They've done away, thank God, with the tier type questions or K questions where you're asked to pick a combination of Roman one, two, three, four, five, uh, that kind of thing. 
And they've done away with case squibs, where they give us cases in criminal law, and then by a process of, of analogy, we have to pick the best fact pattern that fits a particular case. So work by process of elimination, never ever, never look for the right answer. Um, time management. This is very important. A lot of people come to me after an exam and they say, Professor Reed, I wasn't able to finish the question. Well, time management is key. You should draw yourself timelines. And I always do when I start the exam. I go to question number 18 and I put down 30 minutes. Then I go to question uh, 36 and I put down one hour and so on. And if I use that time management technique, theoretically I'll have 10 to 15 minutes left to go back and look at some questions that I've identified by marking them somehow that I didn't really understand. So theoretically or hypothetically if I'm on question 15 and 30 minutes have elapsed, 16, 17, 18 will be A, B, C and a question mark next to each one of those and now I'm back on track. That's the way you've got to do it because there is no penalty for guessing. So time management. Number four, uh, uh, strike that, number five, test each answer individually. That is, look at each answer individually. Number one, see if the uh, answer choice is a correct statement of fact. If it's incorrect, draw a line through it. You're finished with it. Secondly, see if it's a correct statement of law. If not, draw a line through it. You're finished with it. And thirdly, see if it analytically fits the call of the question. If not, draw a line through it. You're finished with it. That way you can back into the right answer choice by testing each answer choice individually. Number six, stick to the basics. Stick to majority rule. Stick to majority rule. It doesn't matter what the law is in your jurisdiction or what you've learned by perhaps clerking for someone. Stick to the basics unless the question quotes a statute, such as in race notice, race, uh, that kind of thing, uh, uh, notice, race notice statutes, then you've got to apply that statute. Number seven, beware of terms of art. We in law have terms of art. Now the good news is Latin choices are not going to be the correct answer choice. On recent exams, I have never seen a Latin choice be the right answer in the last 10 years. All right? But there are terms of art. Malice in torts means something different than malice in criminal law. So you have to know that malice means publishing something knowingly it's false or with reckless disregard of its truth or falsity in torts, whereas malice in criminal law means infliction of some sort of great bodily harm or imminent death. So you have to understand these terms of art. Number eight, do not get emotionally involved. Do not get emotionally involved. Forget about it. They have little Nora, the helper, uh, the, the, the volunteer. Unfortunately, she commits larceny. She's guilty of larceny. Number nine, off the wall questions, you're gonna get them, especially the experimental questions. Get rid of them, don't worry about them. Apply basic rules of law, general rules of law. And then number 10, Number 10, status quo. Whatever you've done to date, make sure you keep doing it. Do not get a divorce. Do not break up with your boyfriend. Do not uh, change anything in your life. Keep doing what you're doing. But here's what you should do to be successful on this examination. Number one, call us. We start our bar review as early as five months before the examination. We have one-on-one -on -one tutoring. We have guided bar study tutoring with a dedicated attorney coach who will guide you through this process. Uh, we have a nano course, a complete course on an iPod along with the materials. And then you can call in for questions. Or number five, a complete bar review for less than $1,000. So go to readlawgroup.com or pastyourbar.com or call us at 800-852-3926. We want to help you pass. Good luck.